Uh, hello, this is Mark Plonquist. I just wanted to do uh, another video. Uh, this one is going to uh, show the difference between hydrofoil and hydroplane. So right now everybody has probably heard of hydrofoil. Hydrofoiling is basically an underwater wing um, that has the ability to lift the hull of a sailboat or a motorboat or a human-powered um, paddle boat out of the water. And hydroplane is basically like a water ski. So let me show you the difference in the lifts. So in one case you have basically an airfoil, a lifting foil, that's shaped something like that. And there's more curvature on the top and anytime you have curvature, you have lift uh, because of the uh, Bernoulli uh, principle and also the Coanda effect. So um, as the water accelerates over the, the top of the curve, the, the pressure in the vertical direction goes down. So, um, so that creates lift. So now let's look at... Um, an inclined plane. So water ski and surfboard, uh, windsurfing boards, they they have a little bit of curvature in the front, and then they have basically a flat section, and they sit in the water like this. Now. One thing that most people don't get is um, skis and uh, wakeboards and windsurfing boards, they're not flat, um, they're, they're inclined. So there's always a positive angle. That's why when you start out, you kind of stand in the middle and you put your weight in the middle here. Um, but then as, as the speed increases, you shift your weight back to here. And what this does is it causes the back of the board to sink and the the front of the board will rise. So this gives you uh, an inclined plane. And what happens is the, um, the on flowing water basically hits this and is deflected. And the, the, um, there's a shift in the direction of the water downward. And um, the lift is always Okay, so let me show you here. There's right about here, a small amount of screen, stream goes, shoots this way. And then most of it, like 95% of it goes basically that way. And at the point where these two streams split, where this 10, 5% goes this way, 95 goes that way, is um, where the force acts. And so the lift is actually in this direction. It's per it's always perpendicular to the board. So if you break down the components of this vector, um, most of it is up and then a small amount is backwards. So a lot of experimentation has been done on what is the ideal angle? How do you get the most amount of lift with the least amount of drag? And um, for a completely flat planing surface, um, the ideal is 4.5 degrees, basically. And then if you have like a V-shape, if this is the front and you have a V-shape, then this will actually increase. So 4.5 is the bare minimum. And then if you have any kind of um, dead rise, um, which most motorboats actually do, they have quite a bit of dead rise, then this, this angle increases to six to eight or something like that, uh, as far as the, the ideal angle. Um, so now the, the difference here is this wing operates under the water and it has two surfaces and eventually, as the, the, the speed increases here, 
uh, the lift increases, but eventually you get cavitation where the, um, the speed of the flow is so fast that it cannot actually follow the curve and it starts separating. And then you get, um, you get bubbles formed. And um, the bubbles are basically, because the pressure is so, so low that uh, the, the water boils basically is um, what happens. Not because it's hot, but because it is low pressure. Um, the design of hydrofoils has improved greatly. It's amazing um, how much better they are today than like 25 years ago. And um, you can pretty much get foils now up to like 36 knots or something like that. Uh, the last time I checked without having problems with separation. Now the difference between a hydroplane and a hydrofoil is this only has one surface in contact with the water. And as the speed increases on a hydroplane, the, uh, the lift increases um, and the drag increases at a rate less than the square of the velocity. So with everything else, the drag increases with the square of the velocity, but with a hydroplane, um, it increases slower. So uh, the speed potential uh, for a hi any hydroplaning surface is, is actually higher than a hy underwater hydrofoil. Um, that's why if you look at a video of windsurfers that have T-foils on them and they're lifting out of the water, uh, check the speed. Um, they're not really going top speed. And in fact, if you, if you go to a place where windsurfers uh, congregate, um, if the wind is above a certain speed, uh, everybody takes off their lifting foils and, and they just um, hydroplane because it's actually um, faster. So so why is there no curvature on this surface and there's curvature here? Why wouldn't, you know, how come you wouldn't like put curvature here? So anytime that you put curvature, if you put curvature on the bottom, you're actually, let's say like this was curved like that, you'd actually get downward suction. So th that would eliminate the uh, the upward um, um, force. Uh, in fact, you could go into super cavitation mode, and you could actually have a concave surface on the bottom. Uh, now that would really produce a tremendous amount of lift because it's deflecting the water more, um, and the lift here would be incredible. The only problem with this is because this angle here is more severe than this angle would be, uh, this at low speeds would be a higher drag. So um, if, so for like a, uh, a hydroplaning surface to uh, lift a boat, uh, it's better just to have basically a wedge shape. The top you could you could put a curve on the top, and that actually would, if the if the way if the surface did go underwater, um, the top, if this is flat and then this is curved, um, the Coanda effect would uh, actually help lift it. Um, so that would create lift on both surfaces if the hydro plane actually went underwater. So uh, the problem with this is then you're cutting into the buoyancy. So um, this is all buoyancy. So um, that's why a wedge shape is good because it still has buoyancy, even if the velocity is below uh, hydroplaning speed. Uh, one more comparison. Um, the speed required on a hydrofoil to lift something out of the water is usually lower than um, like what it takes for a, a, a ski boat to lift a water skier out of the water. Um, this is eight knots and eight knots. And this is like 10. So 
hydroplanes don't really work in less than 10 knots. They just, um, uh, it has to do with the, um, the speed of the velocity of the, the water. But at 10 knots, um, you'll notice that a water skier will be completely hydroplaning at 10 knots. And as the speed of the boat that's pulling it increases, the, um, the surface area required to support the weight of a full-size adult decreases so that at 50 knots, um, the surface area, you can actually water ski on your feet, your bare feet at 50 knots. So um, that's quite incredible. And at 10 knots, um, a skimboard, uh, look at this skimboard video real quick. The, the skimboarder only has to run about 10 knots and the, the skimboard, which is approximately three feet by two feet and, uh, and it's an ellipse. So that means uh, the surface area is around. It's basically, uh, let's see, what is it? Pi over four. So it's like um, five square feet. Um, so, Here's a guy on a skimboard. And so at 10 knots, uh, a skimboard can support the weight of an entire person. Okay, so now I have um, two shapes here. Um, this is a long and skinny hull, which is the shape of an outrigger for a trimaran. And um, let's say it has an aspect ratio of one to 16. So, um, that's kind of a definition of a long and skinny hull. Um, and let's give it a volume that is equal to the weight of um, one person. And then beside it, um, I'm going to draw a skimboard. Now the skimboard, obviously, it'll sink if you're not, if you're just at rest. Um, the uh, long and skinny hull will not; it'll support your weight. The skimboard will sink, but above ten knots, both of these actually have equal lift. And then um, above ten knots. Um, this one actually will increase, its lift will actually increase with increasing speed, and this one will not, because it doesn't have dynamic lift, it just has buoyancy lift. So, as the power, the, the, the wind, um, pushes harder on the sail, it's going to drive this lee hull deeper into the water. And um, d there's nothing dynamic about this hull. Uh, you have equal pressure on the left and the right, and the bottom does not have very much rocker. And it, yeah, even if it, if it actually the, the 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 more flat it is, the the less it'll have a downward uh, suction. So a lot of these outriggers are pretty flat on the bottom. Um, but so, so what if you combine these two? What if you actually stuck a um, skimboard here and a skimboard here, and you incline these surfaces so that from the front view, you got it like that. And the water, so initially the water's down here, and then the water, as it, the boat heals, the water gets to here. And then the water starts deflecting downward off of these inclined plates. And at that point, you have triple the lift 
of the, just the single hull. You have one, two, and three. And if you increase the wind speed, these vectors get bigger and this one stays the same. So you're already like three times uh, the lift of just the long and skinny hull. Because these are attached to the long and skinny hull, the, 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 the hull actually helps uh, with the angle of attack. So um, anyway, um, that is the idea behind the wing moran. And that is the idea behind a hydroplaning wing.